Hello, you are now watching a journey through the Ida B. Wells Museum with Tiffany Blake. Ida B. Wells is a native of Holly Springs, Mississippi. She was born July 6, 1862, and she died on March 25, 1931. She is best known for being a journalist and an anti-lynching crusader. Also, the Ida B. Wells Museum has been in the city of Holly Springs for more than two decades. We've been here in this building uh, 18 years. But we, our history goes way back. We started in the 70s. Okay, roughly in the 70s. We was chartered in 1996, I think it was, when we was, the museum was chartered, officially chartered. The museum consists of five major rooms. Room one is the Ida B. Wells room, and it contains personal collections and awards of Ida B. Wells. Room 2 is the local genealogy room, and it features several documents on African American families of Holly Springs, Mississippi. Room 3 is the permanent art collection room, and it contains several African American artifacts painted and created by African American artists. Room 4 is the art gallery exhibit, and every six to eight weeks, it is updated in hopes of keeping it new and fresh for tourists. Room 5 is known as the Spires Bowling House Tours Room or the Multipurpose Room and it is used to give the history of the Spires Bowling House. Reverend Leona Harris told about several facts in the museum and also how each room was utilized. Uh, this is kind of the multipurpose room where we use it as a lecture hall, special exhibits, and things of that nature. Um, and this is the starting place for giving the um, background of um, Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells learned to deal with trials and tribulations at a very young age. Eighteen seventy-eight. We had an outburst of yellow fever here in Holly Springs. The population was approximately, uh, uh, approximately 3,000. When it ceased, it was only 800 people left. And so Ida's mother, her father, and her, a, little, her little brother, my name is uh, Stanley, he was 18 months of age. And he was, all of these family members were victims of the yellow fever. Reverend Harris also cleared up some misunderstandings about the museum. They think that Ida was born in this house, which she was not born in this house. She was born uh, on these premises. The next room contains special items that belong to Ida B. Wells. The room that we are in, room number one now, this room contained a collection of personal memorabilia awards and belonging of Ida B. Well. Okay. Ida's granddaughter provided us with this, this piece. Here. And these are Rosenthal China hand painted specifically for Ida B. Wells. Okay, if you can see there on that plate too, on the right side, you can see the, the autograph and the names and all those kinds of things. When we return from the break, you will hear from Victoria Siegel, Dr. Danielle Lee, and Agnes Cummings, all tourists who visited the museum, and you will also hear from Dr. A.J. Stovall, a political science professor on the campus of Rust College in Holly Springs. Courage, love, and friendship. Always have a forgiving heart. Love starts with you. A message from Royalties Ad Council. Welcome back to a journey through the Ida B. Wells Museum with Tiffany Blake. Victoria Siegel was passing by the museum and decided to stop by. It was a new place for her to visit. 
First time coming to the museum, it's first time coming to Holly Springs. Okay. Dr. Danielle Lee, along with her cousin, Agnes Cummings, were looking for clues about their family history. They were hoping that speaking with several people at the museum and in the town would put them on course to finding more information about their family history. Our great, great, great grandparents included a Henry House, and he's mentioned in a book about Ida B. Wells. Dr. Lee talked about the items in the museum and how they all come together to give off a certain image to tourists. The illustrations as well as the, the artifacts that tell this great story. In other words, it brings to life like a diorama, uh, the chronicle of her life and her family's life here in Holly Springs, Mississippi. Although Dr. Lee was aware of some of the stories and work about the life of Ida B. Wells, it was helpful to her coming to the museum, getting an up-close view on other members of Ida's family. This could potentially help her answer questions during her research. Just learning so much about Mr. Wells and his craftsmanship, um, I was already familiar with uh, Ida B. Wells' activism and her journalism, but learning, you know, being in this spot where she was born and spent her early life, just really learning more about her and her family's history in Holly Springs was really exciting. Agnes Cummings felt this trip was very beneficial, and coming to the museum was definitely the right choice. It has been amazing, and the first 10 minutes of our visit, everything just really fell into place. It was like our ancestors were here just guiding us and throwing things at us. So it's Dr. A.J. Stovall, a political science professor on the campus of Russ College, feels that the museum has a lot to offer. And one of the things the museum will do then is bring tours, it brings people here, and it's good for students so they can understand that this great lady went to Russ College which also then suggests that it's something for them to have pride in. So it brings a sense of pride to the community. Uh, it brings a sense of historical significance of the city of Holly Springs in Marshall County. Throughout Ida's career, she had several accomplishments. The foundation was laid early and she knew what she had to do to be successful in life. I didn't went to school. Her, whatever I did went on to be an international, world-known uh, person and what have you, her foundation was laid right here in Holly Springs. And again, she talks about it in Crusade for Justice because she talks about the fact that her mother and father uh, uh, job demanded that their job was to go to school and get a good education. And she said that um, Shaw, Shaw University, um, was first was the first um, school started, which we know today as a HBC uh, school. We also know that Shaw University has been Russ College. Ida B. Wells took her education very seriously, and she continued to pass that trait down for years to come. She was a well-learned student, and she was obedient to her parents, and she said that's the way the children were. They had to go to school and get a good education. And if you were to see their family today, you can see that still uh, being revealed in that family life. Doctors, lawyers, teachers, homemakers, you name it, it's there. Ida B. Wells should never be forgotten for her contribution to society. She was a lady of courage, dignity, and respect and she should always be honored for her commitment to her race and gender. Dr. A.J. Stovall tells about some of the amazing things that Ida B. Wells completed in her lifetime. Ida B. Wells could have been one that could have just gone on and been selfish and did well for herself, but she saw the need to make a contribution for the race, not just for then, but for children that was yet unborn. And that's one of the most important things that we can pick up today. People tend to be more self-centered thinking about themselves. But we'd have never gotten to where we are if it wasn't for the Ida B. Wells of the world that sacrificed their well-being, sacrificed their safety 
Because you know Ida B. Wells, um, they threatened to lynch her. Ida B. Wells didn't take no for an answer, and she was an inspiration to others. Her museum continues to promote empowerment. Agnes Cummings gave her feedback on how the museum made her feel. Just when someone says you can't or you shouldn't, that's when you really should try harder. Um, when things are dangerous and your life is threatened and I know there's fear, that's when it's more important for someone to take action. Many people know Rosa Parks as being the first African-American female to refuse giving up her seat on the bus. But what few people know is that Ida B. Wells had broken down barriers almost 100 years before Parks. Train that she was riding, going on her way to work, and, and the conductor told her, "She, you can't, um, you, you have to go in the smoke car." And you know she would say no. And again, in her book, she talked about how she grasped with her uh, the back of the seat and propped her feet up, and she said she was not going to be moved. But she said, to her surprise, the conductor came back with two men, and they took off the train. She said she bit him on the hand, though, in the process. Even after being kicked off the train, Ida continued to move forward and show courage by fighting for justice, even though the odds were not in her favor. She didn't let fear hold her down. Went and when they took her off the train, she went back to Memphis, got her an attorney, sued the uh, Chesapeake Railroad, and uh, they was awarded her $500. But later on, with their power and prestige, they was able to get it rescinded. So, but then later on, I, I read and I found out that the reason they, what happened was, is that because of what she did, that challenge and that law, you know, these power makers and power doers, they had changed the law. See, this was in the Constitution, no discrimination and on the trains and what have you. They were dealing, back, dealing with that back in the day. And so in any case, they had to change the law in order for, her to, for them to rescind her decision. Ida B. Wells worked with the National Equal Rights League for All Women. She also created the first African-American kindergarten in her community, and she fought for women's suffrage and participated in several marches and protests, as Wells provided several writings throughout her career of journalism, she also continued to make a difference as an anti-lynching crusader. She never let danger or risk stop her. She once said, I feel one better die fighting injustice than to die like a dog or a rat in a trap. And her most famous quote of all was, I wish I could wrap my arms around my people and fly away. In the museum, we feel that this, this highlights the very essence of who Ida B. Wells was and what she did. And it starts off with that Ida is a great American. And I think we all can agree with that. And, uh, those bullets indicate uh, some of the significant, important uh, struggles that she dealt with. We say she was a passionate crusade against oppression. She was a great teacher, acclaimed journalist, articulate public speaker, civil rights activist, anti-lynching crusader, women's rights activist, and one of the founders of NAACP. Well, you know, if we... Um, really have looked into our history, we will know passionate crusade against oppression. Um, that is one of the highlights, very highlights of Ida's life. Thanks for watching A Journey Through the Ida B. Wells Museum with Tiffany Blake. The Ida B. Wells Museum and Cultural Center of African American History is located at 220 North Randolph Street in Holly Springs, Mississippi. For more information about tours, contact Reverend Leona Harris, the Executive Director, 662-252-3232, or you can contact her at Ida B. Wells Museum 
at gmail.com. If you would like to visit the Ida B. Wells website, go to www.idabwellsmuseum.org.